from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, February the 4th, 2019. A Palestinian man tried to enter the tomb of the patriarchs in the West Bank city of Hebron yesterday with a knife. Israel border police officers noticed the man acting suspiciously and called him over for a security inspection, where they became more certain that he was carrying a weapon and aimed their weapons at him. At that point, the suspect, Israel police said, drew the knife that he had been concealing in his clothing, threw it to the ground, and raised his hands. He was taken for questioning, where he admitted to intending to carry out a stabbing attack. United Nations ambassadors from across the globe are wrapping up a visit to Israel this week. The diplomatic mission, organized by the American Zionist movement and the March of the Living, began last week in Poland and then spent five days in Israel, meeting yesterday with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who briefed the group before they departed for a tour of Israel, including its northern border to see, among other things, the terror tunnels dug by Hezbollah from Lebanon infiltrating Israel. Netanyahu told the group that he hoped seeing the reality that Israel faces for themselves would better inform their decisions regarding Israel at the United Nations. The important thing is not merely to uh, see the truth, which you will in this visit, it is also to speak the truth, and may I say, to vote the truth. So I have... Uh, a non-hidden agenda in uh, uh, agreeing to Danny Danone's uh, suggestion that you come here. Uh, we want to see you change your votes. Construction of the final stage of a new and improved security fence along Israel's border with Gaza is underway. The IDF said the building of the final component of the Gaza Strip Barrier Project began Thursday. IDF Brigadier General Iran Ophir, who leads the project, said of the barrier, the obstacle is unique and specially designed to protect against the threats from the Strip and to give a superior solution to preventing infiltration into Israeli territory. The 20-foot high galvanized steel fence will also be equipped with sensors and other modern security components, making it far more difficult to breach than the current fence. It is expected to be completed by the end of this year. The president of Austria is in Israel this week. Alexander van der Bellen met with Prime Minister Netanyahu today, as well as with his Israeli counterpart, President Reuven Rivlin, with whom he met this morning at his residence in Jerusalem. Van der Bellen addressed Austria's role in the Holocaust, which he said took too long to admit. He said Austria bears shared responsibility for the Holocaust. Many Austrian citizens took part, and we bow our heads in memory of the victims in humility and respect. Van der Bellen added, our aim is to ensure that Jews everywhere feel safe. It is our responsibility as Austrians to the victims of the Holocaust to ensure that we live in peace and agreement with Israel. Rivlin thanked the Austrian president for being a true friend of the state of Israel and of the Jewish people. And the two visited the Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial Museum, where van der Bellen laid a wreath at a ceremony in the Hall of Remembrance. Yesterday, van der Bellen visited the Western Wall in Jerusalem's old city. Israel's Ministry of Strategic Affairs published a report yesterday showing connections between non-governmental organizations that promote the boycott of Israel and Palestinian terror groups. They reported over 100 cases of links between Hamas and the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine and at least 13 NGOs promoting the BDS boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign that seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel. The so-called Terrorists in Suits report alleges that the two terror organizations have placed over 30 of their members, some of whom have served prison time, including for murder, in senior positions within those NGOs. Dozens of anti-Israel demonstrators gathered outside New York City's Carnegie Hall yesterday to protest a performance by the Israel Philharmonic Orchestra. The demonstration was organized by Adala New York, a group that supports the BDS campaign against Israel. However, the protest did not stop the over 100 musicians from the Philharmonic 
from their performance. Israel's Consul General in New York, Dani Dayan, who was in the audience, said, I am proud that the Philharmonic Orchestra came to New York. Israeli culture is sought after all over the world and brings pride to Israel. He said, no protest will stop Israeli culture from blossoming in Israel and beyond. Well, the Patriots' Julian Edelman became the first Jewish player to be named Super Bowl MVP, helping his team to a victory over the Los Angeles Rams last night. The 32-year-old wide receiver's father is Jewish, and while not raised Jewish, Edelman has embraced his Jewish identity of late. And if you recall, after the Tree of Life shooting in Pittsburgh last year, Edelman wore special cleats with Hebrew on them and a Jewish star to honor and remember the victims. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS from Monday, February the 4th at 7 o'clock, it's the wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 7.30, former chairman of the Jewish agency, Natan Sharansky, discusses Israel and Jewish life today with Elliot Abrams from the 2018 Jewish Leadership Conference on Jews and Conservatism. At 8 o'clock, terrorism and legal analyst Jeremy Bob talks about Israel's nation-state law, its rules of engagement on the Gaza border, and Israeli human rights issues. At the Lawfare Project in New York City. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Rabbi Aryeh Katzen on L'Chaim. At 10, former NBC newsman David Gregory discusses issues of faith and identity at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, it's the ILTV program, The Jewish World. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, February the 4th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.